Welcome back to Fast Market, everyone. Kevin Hinks back here for the second segment of our show. First, let's take a look at the four major indices and see where they sit here as we get to the bottom of the hour. The S&P down a third of a percent, 14 and a half points to 45.35. The NASDAQ 100 down 1% on the nose, 155 points to 15,335. The Dow Jones Industrial Average now positive on the day up just slightly, up nine points to 35,612, and the Russell 2000. Down a half percent, 12 points and some change to 2284 even. Now, let's bring in Joe Mazzola. He's back for another segment, but now let's bring in the co-founder of likefolio.com, Mr. Landon Swan, to the show. And first, Landon, I want to thank you. We had a whole nother show planned for this segment, but we asked Life Folio to pivot to social media and you guys were able to do it quick. I love the fact that this show and Life Folio, our partner on the show, is lean and agile and can move from one topic to another. We appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you guys moving topics as the market moves. Landon, you've got a lot of data here on social media. Social media is rocking today as the news from Snap is kind of riled this market what do you got for us today in terms of social media names sure and you know what i appreciate you, you calling that out we are agile uh we do ha actually have a lot of our hedge fund clients have been emailing us today asking us for data on these i'm companies. sure so, uh, you're not the only ones uh, this is top of mind for a lot of people and you know we did a show what a couple of weeks ago on here talking about privacy concerns with facebook mm -hmm. And um, it, it's incredible that now it's like starting to play out exactly how, you know, all the concerns are pointing to, um, you know, when you when you ask people or actually not when you ask, but when you look at um, how much people are concerned and which companies they're concerned with, look at the big numbers here, Facebook, 52 percent, Instagram, 23 percent. That's the same company. That's 75 percent of uh, concern are with those. Now, of course, that has to do with the fact that they have the most users. Um, and so obviously that's that's where that comes from. Snapchat, only 5 percent, but um, it's not so much obviously the privacy, it's the advertising. And if you can't get that data and you can't use that personalized data without their permission, uh, then it's going to be very tough to market and to track your marketing and your advertising. And that's really important for an advertiser. They want to know what their ROI is on each one of these ads. And if you're just kind of firing blindly, uh, then you might as well do Google AdWords or something else. And so Facebook is losing a huge, huge advantage that they had. Um, and, you know, you can we can debate the, the ethics or the morality of what they were doing, but it was making a lot of money. And now Apple is, you know, closing that door effectively. And um, I think that the market is reacting fairly appropriately. I think that you know, Snapchat being down, what, 25% today, and they're blaming supply chain and labor shortage. I get it. You know, I saw the segment just a little bit ago, but it kind of reminds me of Southwest blaming the weather, you know, for their problems or all their cancellations. <laughs> I think investors kind of see through things a little bit, right? Um, we know what that really was. We know what's happening at Snapchat. And that's why, you know, Facebook is down, Pinterest down, Twitter's down. They're all down 4 5 6% today. Uh, so I think that's, uh, you know... It's a it's a very big concern. Apple's really shaking things up. Um, and what's interesting, you guys talked about you know, if it's a paid subscription, right? Like Facebook has about three mm -hmm. billion monthly active users, which is an insane number considering the the world population is just a little bit more than double that. Um, but and they make around I think a hundred billion dollars a year. So you're talking about three dollars per person per month. Uh, obviously, they're not going to go to a full paid subscription, but they make most of their money on advertising, and that's what they would have to charge sure. if everyone stayed on. If, of course, not everyone would stay on. If half the people quit, they'd have to charge six bucks a month. Um, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't pay six bucks a month for Facebook. I don't. I barely use it as it is. So um, <laughs> it's it's interesting, and it it's a huge topic right now. Privacy concerns are about. Uh, plus 24% versus two years ago. People talking on social media just about how concerned they are about what's going on with their privacy. Everything with Facebook recently is, is moving that number up. So um, this, is, this is interesting. I, I love to see how the markets react. Uh, but I will say that, you know, I'm concerned, obviously, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, very concerning. But I think that Pinterest is the sort of the hidden gem here. Um, I think that's the sure. one that is going to survive this more than anyone. And I think them being off 4 or 5% today is an opportunity because this, I do not think, affects them nearly as much as it affects Facebook. 
Well, let's let's stick to that real quick then, uh, because you know the, the news is that PayPal uh, is going to be making a move for Pinterest, and you know, do you factor that into kind of your uh, your view on on uh, the potential for Pinterest going forward? Uh, no, so I, you know, MA activity, I don't have any insight into that. I don't have any you know edge, I guess. Uh, but when you look at how people use Pinterest. It's, it's very similar to how they use a Google, where they're typing something in, they're saying, I'm interested in this topic. It's, a, you know, it's one use right there. They don't have to know how old you are, where you're from, how much money you make, your gender, all that stuff that Facebook relies on. They don't need to know that. They just need to know, what are you looking for right now? And they do a great job of surfacing ads that are actually helpful to you, just like Google. Google's ads are, generally speaking, very helpful because you said, I want this. And Google and Pinterest say, here you go. Whereas Facebook, you don't have to tell them what you want. They, they have advertisers that try to think what you want based on all your data. So this is, I think, actually a buying opportunity for Pinterest. Um, and I think that, you know, based on what Facebook is doing, I think Facebook down 6%, looking at what Snapchat's done, I'm not a buyer of Facebook at down 6%, but I am a buyer of Pinterest down 4.5% today. All right, Landon, let's throw this around a little bit because one of your screens that you sent us was technology privacy mentions. And that looks like a rising number that people talking about privacy. But here's my counter. I have two, right? Number one, I think it's naive that these great companies that are involved in social media won't figure this out. Right. You set up the rules. We'll figure ways to get around it. Right. It's one, it's one of those situations. And number two, what if they were to put out a either let us use your data or pay two dollars a month and put that out there to their users and give them a choice that might take take that 16 percent, 84 percent and flip it to a much bigger number because people upset about data, oh, well, if I got to pay two bucks, then I don't care about the data as much anymore, right? So it could be something like that, Lynn. And if you give them a choice, well, here's the cause or effect. You can either get it for free and we use your data to understand the advertisers, or you can pay for the service. Now, people may choose actually, ah, oh, take my data, I don't care. Your right. thoughts. You know what? I love that angle. And you can also actually kind of tweak it a little yeah. bit. Instead of using the stick, you could use the carrot and say, you know what? If you let yeah. us use your data, then we'll, you can get whatever, 10% off the next thing you buy on an ad or whatever it is. I mean, you can get creative. I agree completely. I mean, I, I guarantee you there's some ideation meetings going on, and they have been for months at Facebook. They're trying to figure this out, and they're smart people with a lot of resources. They will figure it out. <laughs> But it is a huge shakeup to their whole business. I mean, that's what they did. As you guys mentioned before, it's free, so the consumer is the product. And that is just completely like turning off that light switch for that whole business. Um, and there's a lot of concern. I mean, Snapchat revenue just is getting crushed on that. The stock's getting crushed. So I think that that is it's at least a very, very significant short-term problem, right? We have to agree that it's a very significant short-term problem. but. Maybe five years from now, it's a blip on the radar and they figured it out. Uh, this chart I do like uh, because despite the growth in usage, which is left or right, look at the difference between Pinterest and the rest of them on happiness. That's the up and down axis. That's the Y axis. So the sure. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, they're all in the 50% happiness. Pinterest is up near 75%. That is a massive difference. And again, it goes back to one of the factors is I'm interested in this and they serve you ads that are actually useful, whereas the other ones are getting in your way. They're preventing you from doing the thing that you want to do and you have to wait or you have to click around it. Uh, if they can figure that out, then I think that, you know, sky's the limit for not only happiness, uh, but customer retention and customer growth. So, Landon, I don't think that this is really a, a matter of Apple just becoming more virtuous, right, than its compatriots. I think this is really no. Apple just saying, hey, we're not <laughs> going to be willing to share, uh, share this data that, the, the way that we had before. You know, you had uh, G Google come in today and talk about how they're cutting the prices on, uh, on, mm -hmm. on, on their, their app application store as well. Like, what, who are some of the companies maybe outside of Pinterest that might benefit from maybe uh, uh, th those cutting in prices on, on the Google, Google store, the Play Store? Uh, that's a good question. You know, initially I was thinking that it, who, the more direct you go to the, the search experience, the better. So like a Google is right there. 
obviously. Um, I do think that Twitter could maybe uh, do well with this too, because I'll tell you that's you know that's our primary source of data. Uh, so I can't say a whole lot about their user base or things like that contractually, but I can say that just based on the way that uh, they operate, it's it's not a ton of personalized data that you're using to serve ads to people. It's more, it's closer to hey, this is what you're interested in, therefore, here you go, this should be of interest to you. Um, so I think that the very direct version of that is Pinterest and Google. Um, and then I think that Twitter's cl much closer than a company like Facebook. I think Facebook is extremely far away, uh, but if Facebook opened up some kind of search uh, where you could look for things and that's where you get your ads from, uh, as opposed to just you know the social platform, uh, then I think they could get there as well. But I think it really comes down to how 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 well can you serve ads to someone accurately in a sort of cookie-less environment where you don't know anything about the user? Assume every user is in incognito mode, and how well can you serve ads to them that are relevant to them? If you can get to that point, then this obviously doesn't affect you at all, and I think the sky's the limit as far as ad revenue. And guys, I'll, I'll chime in here with two stocks that may benefit from these user feeds being cut. And what this is, uh, Google Alphabet cut their user fees from 30%, their developers' fees from 30% to 15 because Apple is making it easier for their developers to get their fees lowered. And so two stocks that may uh, be benefit from this, Joe and Landon, is how about Match and Bumble, two heavy users mm -hmm. of this platform that, that could be definitely benefit from the lower fees coming down. So Landon Swan, we appreciate you coming on as always. Landon Swan is the co-founder of likefolio.com. We, we threw a little curveball at you today, Landon, and you hit it out of the park as always. Thanks for coming on. Have a great day, sir.